My name is Richard Casper. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I teach the course here at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This program started basically because after my injuries in war, I didn't know how to deal with myself. I came back, had a brain injury, my best friend was shot, killed. I didn't know myself at that point. Art has helped me by giving me a chance to have a voice again. I used to not be able to leave my house. I couldn't go talk to people. I would physically throw up and get sick. If you could be 0% that's committing suicide, 100% being the best you can be. After the Marine Corps, after being injured, I was at probably like a 9 or a 10. And after the school, I was back to like 85% me. For people who may struggle like I did and didn't want to break out of the house and be like, I'm not sure if this is going to work, I just want them to know my story and be able to come out here and learn with other combat vets how to do art. And if they're looking for one more way, if they just come out here and give me a chance, it's going to be worth it. What we were aiming for is to express what we were dealing with, you know, when we were deployed and during our military career, where we literally get out of our element, go on this kind of like alternate reality to go back in time, think about what we went through and express it to other people. Just being exposed to different concepts of art, like at the museum and some of the contemporary art we saw, um, that's what influenced me to try doing a performance piece for my last project. The opportunity to be at the school was just phenomenal. It was amazing. We could, at lunch, we could go and wander the halls of the museums and that was, that was pretty awesome. I think the hardest part was actually talking about what I've been through. With. It was easy talking to Richard because he is a combat veteran and he has been through stuff I've been through. And my job was to, you know, go find IEDs or find landmines or anti-personnel landmines and take them apart. And little did I know, I was putting that stuff inside me. At first, it's a little hard to let yourself become vulnerable. Um, you won't really know what to do right away. It takes a couple days. I know for me, it took a week. Being surrounded by a bunch of veterans that, like, know what combat feels like knows the after effects of combat, knows how it feels to come home. It was really comfortable being here. They're gonna come to class like normal college students, treated like normal people, that know how to be like, I can be in college, I am a normal person, and I could live like everybody else lives. If even one of them chose to go to college and study art and has that artist brain to where it saved them, it's totally worth it. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. So today we're gonna make some wind chimes and uh, hopefully, I'm hoping, we'll uh, have a little bit of time after that. And uh, hey, thanks for the host, Timmy's come back. Um, we'll be able to get a little bit of painting done. So I've been doing some acrylic pour paintings and uh, a little experiments and uh, I'd like to play with those a little bit tonight if we've got time but first we're gonna make wind chimes <laughs> so I've got everything set out over here on my desk and um, I think we'll just get right to it all right so let's pop over there all right so I've got a couple of things here. I purchased a set of wind chimes and a little bell. Uh, I've got some 556 five, brass uh, that was just used, picked up off the range, and we popped uh, the firing pin out of it, right? So it's safe to use. Um, <laughs> you can do this project with fishing line if you like. Uh, this is just a wax cotton cord, which I find holds up a little bit better. It doesn't get brittle as fast. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I've got a couple of um, little metal rings here, right? 
and some wire and we're going to wire wrap these rings so that they look like this so that when we run the cord through it'll hold in place and not move back and forth right and it looks kind of nice so I've got that one just as an example to show you <coughs> I already need to grab my drink I'm sorry Here we go. Hope everybody's doing good. So, the thought here, I also have a little key ring. The thought here is that we're going to have these two layers, like this, right? We're going to run our string through here, attach them through these, and then this is what we'll hang it from. And that will be that. So pretty simple. So to, sh to show you how I did this, this has six points of beads on it, right? We're going to wire wrap this one. And we're only going to put five of these little things, right? So this one has six because it, we're going to string these through and those are going to hang off of that. And there's six of those. There's only five of these little chimes. So those are going to hang on the interior off of this one. And then this little bell that will hang in the, in the very center of everything will come straight up, connect through the cords at the top, and connect to this key ring so it, hold, it holds right in the center. Hopefully that makes sense to y'all. But first, we're going to wire wrap this. So, what I need to figure out, and I haven't done the math on it, is how far I have to wire wrap to have five evenly spaced places and where the end of my wire is. That would be good to know as well. There it is. Let's get this untangled before we start. There we go. That's better. So Yes, Beta the Streamer Cat likes to uh, interrupt this kind of work. He loves it. So, I'm going to measure this real quick. So, 13 inches. And we need five points. Right? Be great if that was 15, wouldn't it? Um, so it's going to be Let me see what the math is. I missed the gift. Did you put up a gift? I had to um, I had to silence my speakers because they're crackling and make a noise and I didn't want that to pick up. So, we're going to go about 2.6, so about 2.6 inches. I do appreciate the sparks, though. 
every ember you guys give, all the sparks, everything goes straight to Creative Vets. So we appreciate that on this channel. It's wonderful. Kind of support is great. All right. So I'm going to start this wrap. Hey, Scar, thanks for the host. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, stream title will get corrected. And I cut myself a nice length of wire, a few feet. And I'm just going to wrap it in a circle around here. We're just spiraling it around. Nothing fancy. Nice. Yeah, that would be from Rick's stream earlier. But Brett will fix it. Or Garrett, maybe. So I'm going to keep going around here until I'm just over two and a half inches. And I'm going to run this pretty tight together. Right? So that um, I can kind of move it through and even all these out to exactly where I want them once I get this done. Hey, you can't fix so like on this one, for instance, you can see how once I got that wire, I pulled it out a little bit to get everything nice and even, right? So I'm going to wrap it really tight at first because we need to be at 2.6 inches. I'm going to wrap it to 2.5 and then I can expand it and give myself a little bit of room. Always better with wire like this to go under than to go over. If I go over, I can't correct it without taking the whole piece apart. If I go under, I can expand it a little. <laughs> so I wasn't really sure how long this would take um, to make these, but I do have some um, acrylic pour projects that I need to work on. So I did an experiment the other night. Um, well, it was last night. Um, doing a chain pull technique on an acrylic pour. Um, we experimented with a few canvases, two of which I do like, but they're not perfect, so they need a little bit of touch up. And then I uh, did an over pour out of what's called a dirty cup, meaning I combined all my colors and then poured them over the top of um, some glass Christmas ornaments. We're just about one inch right now.
And those uh, I set upside down to dry and the tops of them need to be touched up. And then everything needs to be clear coated. So I clear coat all of my pores, all my acrylic paintings on my canvases so that they're easier to dust. Um, and the color stays true. I think they just last longer that way. Um, but you can clean them without damaging them because acrylic paint is water-based. It makes it much easier. They've got a coat, a clear coat on top of them. One more inch to go. I gotta tell you, this is really redundant. It's incredibly relaxing to me. <laughs> Much like, I guess, maybe um, sewing or knitting or crocheting or macrame, anything that's, you know, multiple steps that are redundant, that are the same over and over again. Those things tend to be pretty relaxing for some people anyway. <clears throat> I enjoy working with wire myself. I like how it feels, but I like how versatile it is. Hey, Beta. I'm going to apologize in advance stream. My cat loves it when I work with wire. It's his favorite thing because he thinks I'm playing with him. So I'm sorry. I can knock him down. He would come right back over and over and over again, so I just let him go because it's easier. <laughs> so, meet Beta, aka Beta the Streamer Cat. Beta, say hi. <laughs> Were you all ready for that? <laughs> yes, he can hear me playing with the wire. I swear he can hear it from two floors away. I don't know if it's the sound of the wire hitting the desk. I don't, I don't know. He loves it. All right. Should be getting pretty close here. And I don't want to go over. <laughs> Just a couple more. All right. This is where it gets dangerous. I'm going to open up this box of these little tiny seed beads. I'm always afraid that he will knock them over. Can I have this piece, please, buddy? Get up. Thank you. All right, so I ran three of these little seed beads. I cross here. I've still got paint in my fingernails from last night, <laughs> which is fine because we're going to have more here in a second. So I'm just going to add those three beads onto the wire just like that, right? And then I'm going to stretch it out 
flat along the wire and then continue to spiral around. And at this point, we're starting on another 2.6 inches of this spiral. Do not tip over that water. I see you thinking, Beta. I'll get into my beads. Don't get into my beads either. Where's your string? Where's your, here it is. It's right here, buddy. Play with that. You hear your daddy down there? Hey, thanks for the host outlaw. Appreciate it. So at the point that this wire ends right here, right? I'm just gonna take these little flat nose pliers on the end of it and twist it against the bigger wire so that it's flat. Then I'm going to grab another length of wire, which unfortunately will make my cat very happy. Now when I start this wire, let's see if you can see this. No, beta. Can I get this to focus in? I can't because the cat's attacking me. Okay, so two or three rings in is where I'm going to start this, right? And then I'm going to wrap it every other one and then continue on so that these hold together. Beta, did you break it? You actually broke the wire. Play with your string. Let me just take what I need to use tonight away from you, please. So after you've got it like in a little hook shape around this wire, it's easier, or I find it's easier, to hold that with pliers, if you can grab it, and you don't have cats. Play with your string. Yes, I'm sure you're enjoying this, Ella. And then I'm just gonna take these flat pliers and push that wire back in so that it's flush.
and then continue on. Yeah, I see this as I'm trying to protect it from my cat and then you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. I'll just keep him distracted and I'll be okay. Beta, play with your string. He really just wants this wire more than anything, I think. He's <laughs> just staring me down. Beta, you're making me nervous. So how is everybody in chat doing? Y'all good? Has anybody ever made wind chimes before? Or made anything with spent brass? You really just gonna lay here this whole time, beta beta? Hmm? Are you really just gonna lay here forever? Hey, Mr. Two. You haven't made anything like this? So, originally, um, we have 50 cal brass um, from Outlaw, right? Uh, and I had wanted to make a wind chime out of those because the size is great, right? Um, and I looked all over and I have no idea where we've stuck them. We stuck them someplace and can't find them. You want a cat, Mr. Two? Um, but the 556 I think works great if you're going to use it in conjunction with actual chimes, right? I mean, if you've got 50 cal, you don't need the little silver wind chimes that I bought at all. You could just use those. 
But my original thought was that I would take the 50 cal and then stagger the stream the string length so that they laid like a wind chime, right? Um, but like I said, I have no idea where they're at. We'll find them someday. But I do have the 556. Five, as long as you remove the firing pin, you can use them. You're allergic to cats? Yeah. Well, this cat is a uh, jerk. Um, no, he's a rescue. Uh, he was trapped in a gutter about two hours from here when he was itty bitty baby. And he had a broken rib. So somebody brought him up to us and we rescued him. And he has been fat and happy and jerky ever since. So. Yes, you're right, deprimed. So that the ends of them look like this. Come on camera. <laughs> Come on camera. So not going to do it. There we go. So that's empty. Yes, indeed. He's just, look, he just broke another piece of wire. He's just particularly good at it. Like, really good at it. He's a professional. But he loves it when I make jewelry, when I work with wire, when I do any, like this is his favorite thing. He'll come from wherever he's at to just pester me nonstop. So I have this little string on my desk so I can constantly distract him. <laughs> Let go. Play with your own string. Beta, I swear. Oh, yeah. You could definitely use. I've used, um, I've used this brass to make um, jewelry pendants. Uh, where I wire wrapped them and put little crystals in the in the bottom of them. Um, I used them to make boutonnieres for a wedding. And now wind chimes. I have seen them used. Uh, I saw a really cool American flag. Here, see, he bit it and it broke really cool American flag made out of them where they affixed them all to um, wood and then used a um, oxidizing brass cream to, to change the colors of the brass. It was really cool.
Yeah. Um, so I've seen the flag. I was trying to think of... Um, I've seen the shotgun shells used as uh, drawer pulls, too, where you um, take them and bore out the brass on the end and run a, uh, you know, the flat metal drawer pulls that look like a metal dowel, and then they just have the two plugs where you drill that out, slide it across the top, and then put the two plugs in and screw it into the drawer. I've seen him use that way on a dresser as well. But yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with spent brass. See where we're at. Write it to. So a few more. So is anybody in here brand new to a creative at stream? Where you've never seen this before? I mean not this particular kind of work, but the stream itself. Outlaw, you are not new. <laughs> You are not new. You were once, though. And I appreciate you being here just the same. All y'all, it's really nice to have you guys here and get to share this kind of stuff with you. It's really cool. Beta, don't break it. Play... Play with your string. The struggle. Hang on just a second. I did not I do say all y'all There is no whisper. No. then it's not going to me.
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I can't see him on um on OBS. If I'm aware it's happening, I can check Mixer for my name. But it kind of defeats the point of a whisper if you have to tell somebody that you're whispering. <laughs> um. <coughs> yeah, because Restream. When I do that, like that, hmm, I don't know. I don't know why I wouldn't see that in OBS. I typed this. I typed the word this. So I don't know why I wouldn't see it, but. That's good to know. I will try and figure out what I need to do to see that. I would hate to think that I had been missing those all along. Although I may not have had any, so it may be okay, but you know. If people want to speak that way, I would like to be able to hear them. It's not Mr. Two's fault. He's doing his best. I'm thankful to have him. Otherwise, it'd just be me and the cat. <laughs> and he's no help at all. <laughs> Look at him. He's not leaving either, y'all. He's, he's here for the night, I'm pretty sure. If, <laughs> if we pull out the paints... Uh, I just want you all to know I'll be picking him up and uh, he'll be heading down the hallway because he cannot be in here when I paint. It does not work. Because he sheds fur like he might be part porcupine. He's majestic. Hey, Skelly. Welcome. Yes, Beta is here. You'd like to see him help with the paints? Well, I'll tell you what. He has been um, such an ongoing fixture, my streams on, on my channel, on Mrs. OEF5, uh, that we made a painting of his paw prints. Have you seen it, Mr. Two? We did a painting with him walking across the paintings.
if you'd like to see it when we when we get to a stopping point here, I'll grab it. It's there in the bookshelves right over here. And you can see it if you want. We did an acrylic pour on three 8x10 canvases with the same uh, paint and then overlaid um, his prints in vinyl and then signed it with the little paw print and it says Beta the Streamer Cat. <laughs> because he's like this a lot. I've been really, really lucky, okay? So I think he mostly gets this out of his system on Wednesdays, right? Because I have a What the Craft Wednesday. Um, and then Thursdays, for you guys, he, he doesn't bother me as much, which is really nice. <laughs> but, you know, not today. Oh, okay. So we're looking pretty good on spacing, right? Because this next one's going to be... Stop. Next one's going to be right here. Did you just break it again? Lord love a duck. There, that's now yours, okay? You can just have all that. <sighs> On creative vets, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Joe. I thought it was funny since, you know, He's got to constantly be the center of attention. Don't eat it. Play with your string. We're doing good. We've almost got this wrapped. Once we have this wrapped, the big one's already wrapped, so I pre-did it in order to show you guys an example early on. Once we get this wrapped, then we will have the right placement for our string to go through that will tie all of these pieces together. And then that string won't move on these wire rings with the actual, <laughs> you want an actual photo of Beta to go with it? Could you keep Kelly's I am sure that we could do that. I'm answering it now, yes. I, I mentioned that. Yes. My idea. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we could have a, a autographed picture of Beta the Streamer Cat. See, we could do this right here for hours, and he would happily just attack stream forever. But you know, it's not like I could stream this cat because if I just streamed the cat and didn't, he would never be here. <laughs> he only shows up when it's, you know, mildly inconvenient. Because he's a cat. And that's what they do. Huh, Beta? Yeah. You're cute though. Are you gonna leave? 
That'd be great. You want your string? Go get it. Excellent. Now we can make some progress. <laughs> I know. He really is. Two and a half inches. Just under two and a half inches. So I'm going to string these little beads on here. We're going to connect this up and call this piece done. And then we'll start putting all this together. So we'll have to figure out exactly how long we want each one of our strings. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before, right? So this wire, focus is going right between the other wire and spiraling around. So you see how you can't tell which is which? All right? It's exactly what we want it to look like. Hey, Khaleesi. Thanks for the follow. So then I'm just going to take these and make sure that all of these little pointy bits of wire are rounded to the big wire so they're not going to bother me. And I'm going to pick up all of Beta's broken bits of wire, unfortunately. So we have our big round, which is this one. And then we have our smaller round, which is this one right? This piece is going to hang above, about that far above, this one like this. And our strings are going to come up as six holding our five, five, six brass. And then these five points are going to hold our wind chimes. Right? So I'm going to do the wind chimes first. I really hope this isn't too loud. So the wind chimes are cool because they're staggered lengths, right? But the bores are all the same. So all I have to do is cut wire the same length and tie it here. All I have to do is find the end of, not wire, thread. So these I want probably probably no longer than about four inches away from that ring. I would say that's probably far enough for them to move in the air, but not so far that they're going to tangle right? If I were to go eight, you can be sure that when they're moving in the air, these strings are going to tangle and we don't want that. So this cord is going to loop through this and come back up and tie off here. So I'm going to want this to be about 10 inches. That's going to give me four inches down. <laughs> four inches back, and two inches for a knot. And I'm going to cut five of these, one for each of these little chimes.
and one more. Yes. Yes, Outlaw shares his room with the cat. Obviously, so do I, through no fault of my own. Nobody has a choice here. So, going to run that through. Run one piece of string through this little loop that I made with the beads, right? What's it focusing on? There we go. Run that right through there. So this wire here is going to hold this pretty much in place, and this loop is going to protect this string from wear and tear. And then I'm just going to tie this in a knot. Just about like that. And that's what it looks like. Right? Got a little bit of extra string hanging there. That's okay. We can always snip that off. Or we can tie a secondary knot around the bottom for extra security. But for right now, I just want to get these relatively straight. And they don't have to be perfect. The 556 five, is not going to be perfectly straight. They're going to be staggered. And the whole point of making this wind chime is that it's for me, right? It's for me to look at and listen to and enjoy. So this one, not perfectly straight. Can pull that down just a little. And we look pretty good. I'm happy with that. This is just gonna continue to get louder in my mic. I apologize. Oh, thanks for the host. So, we chose to use spent brass, right? Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can do this. So you can buy this little wind chime kit online, just like I did, with these chimes and a hollow bell, right, that'll, that'll chime in the center of them. Uh, relatively inexpensively, I think I spent $7 total. Um, the rings I already had here, the little keychain that we're using and this waxed thread I already had here. Uh, like I said, you can use fishing line. You can use anything you want. Um, but as far as hanging a second row of things, right? Uh, some things that are pretty cool to use are um, like old bobbers um, or you could use uh, like the a little kid's um, like a little statue, like the little resin statues, um, and maybe a piece of round wood that you drilled holes out for these ropes to go through. Place that little statue on the top. 
and then string your strings around it so that it's highlighted there. Pretty good. Um, but anything that you like, right? Bangs of freedom. <laughs> um, anything that works for you. I mean, I'm sure you could look around your house and find little, you know, paperweights or something else like that, that that appeals to you that you could incorporate into this design. If you have a round coaster, that's wood. Minor carnelian. But you can drill holes right here, and then you have all this surface space to put something else on, right? To decorate it. Actually, you could drill holes through this uh, and make a really, really cool wind chime, or you could drill a hole this way in it and make it the ringer. And that's a coaster, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be brass. It works for us. How loud is this in my mic? Is it like really, really bad? Do I need to wrap these in bubble wrap so it's not doing this this whole time or are you guys okay? Got a good sound to me. If it was outside. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave these strings with this extra little tail on them, just like that for now, right? So, let's test this. So I think, yeah, I can use this same bead, here it is. So if these are, hang on a second, we've got to do some measurements for this second piece. So if these are here, This is going to hang right here. Can you see that dimensionality that we're going for here? Right? This is going to hang right below that. Thanks, Outlaw. Um, and then these six pieces of brass are going to hang there. So what I need to know is how far is it from each one of these beads to here, right? So if I hang that two inches, if I go two inches to there, then five inches total. Five inches total should do it. Pretty sure. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my little tape measure. I'm going to hook this under my hand. Get that to go straight. Got it backwards and you can't see it. This is like gymnastics. Can you guys see that five? So it's hitting just under the holes in each one of these chimes, which is right about where we want it, right? Because we don't want this brass hitting that string. We want it striking these. So we're going to need six sets of string. We want it five inches from this ring, right? And then this string is going to continue up. How 
How did I have this figured? Hold please while I think about this. That's correct. This string is going to continue up because this is the one with six. So it would continue up. So I'm going to give it, because it's going to come all the way up to this part, which is the part that we're going to hang. How much for the tying? So five inches to the chime. I always give myself two inches for a knot. And then I'm gonna give myself another five, maybe, maybe more than that. I'm gonna go 14 inches on each one of these strings and give myself plenty of room to get to the point where it comes up like this and then connects to this key ring so it can be hung. So I'm gonna give myself 14 inches so I've got plenty of space. And I'm gonna cut six of these. This string is not doubled, it will be single. So I don't have to worry about doubling it like I did with the others. So there's four. Five. And six. So doesn't matter what color bead I use right now. But for those of you like me or picky, I'm going to use the exact same color of bead because it's what I do. Nobody's ever going to see it. It's inside of a piece of brass. So I'm going to put this bead on here. Going to put this bead on here. Maybe, maybe not. They may not be bored well enough to get this thick waxed cord through there. There we go. Okay, so to keep this bead secure, see how tiny this little bead is? Right? Let's see if it'll stay focused. I'm gonna loop it back through I may not be able to do this with this small a bead. I may have to go get something a little bit bigger because I want it looped back through itself so the knot doesn't come out. I am. I'm going to have to get a bigger bead. Um, what do I have that's bored big enough to do what we need to do? I might have some in here. Well, I'm not sure, or I guess I can just change the knot. I may have to do that. I don't have so, you know what would work great for this, guys? Like, you know those inexpensive little kid beads? I don't remember what they're called. Um, but you can, like, melt them in the oven. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. You guys know what I'm talking about? I'm gonna sort through here until I find beads that are big enough. I think that'll it'll work. 
but like the little inexpensive plastic beads that have um, like a fairly big hole in them. And you can buy them anywhere. Like most box grocery stores have them. Those would work great for this. See if this will work better. So I'm going to come through here once. I'm going to loop back. Come through here twice. Looks like this. Right? Yeah, kids beads. Pull that tight. And then I'm going to tie it in just a regular knot. So it ends up looking just like that. Now, this is the exact reason why I chose the moment in this process that made me choose waxed cord as opposed to fishing line. Like I said, you can use either one, whatever you've got. but I have to find this little tiny hole in the center of this brass. And since I can do this with waxed cord and it will stay straight, it makes it much easier but it's still malleable enough that it works for a wind chime, whereas wire will not. It's also waterproof, which helps for outside. So there's one. Now, fishing line, like I said, you can still use it. It's not that deep. It's just harder to get through that little tiny interior hole. The other nice thing about um, this being waxed cord is if I want to put some kind of insect repellent or anything like that on it, it'll just cling to that wax and I don't have to worry about it damaging the cotton or making the uh, fishing line brittle. And fishing line does get brittle in the sun pretty easy. Or if you leave them out over winter, the elements wear it down. It's my focus face, guys. Oh my goodness. I'm doing really good, Khaleesi. You doing good? I, uh, I ended up working late today. So I legit wolfed down a sandwich in seven minutes before I hit the button to start this stream. So. <laughs> I 
I hope I don't sound less prepared than normal. But, yeah. I did eat a sandwich, though. And it was good. Because I had it on brioche bread, and I love that stuff. It's the best. And I know that we're probably going to run a little long tonight. Um, last week we ran a little short and I, I really didn't like it, by the way. It bothered me. Um, so I knew that we were going to run a little bit long tonight. And I'd like very much to work on these acrylic paints paintings that I've got sitting back here. Um, and I know that when we did the pour paintings on this stream before, uh, I had a lot of really positive feedback and people enjoyed that. So I thought it would be fun to follow up with um, different ones that I've made since then uh, and different techniques that I've used. Um, for those of you who like are routinely here to get to see that. Wow, Khaleesi, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's really impressive. For those of you that don't know, SOT is Sea of Thieves. There are quite a few, um, quite a few veterans that play Sea of Thieves that I know actually. seems to be popular with my people. <laughs> Those are always my people. Whew. All right, four down. We're doing great. Now we're on to these harder beads that have the smaller, that have the smaller, um, Oh, there it is. I was like, oh no, why are there only five here? I had six. I scared myself. Maybe we can, maybe a couple of these are better. Yeah, I think these are better. We'll grab these two. PVP nerd. <laughs> oh. That's fun, though, every now and then. Do something a little different than what you usually do. Wow, that'll just barely go through there. There we go. Well, yeah, if you're if you're getting first place wins, you've got to be doing pretty good. I wonder if the camera will pick up just how small this little guy is. Because this hole on the outside 
is appreciably larger than this tiny hole on the interior that I'm putting this through. This one's just going to be stubborn. There we go. Last one. That's funny. Well, that's how the game is played, right? That's what you're supposed to do. straight. <laughs> no pun intended, right? This end wants to curve. It's always the last one that takes the longest to me. It's probably not, but you know, it always feels that way. All right. There they are in all their glory. I must have this in here to scoop these out. This was very clever of me at some point to have put that in there. Probably be a good idea to remember that I put it in there. <laughs> oh, did you get all tense? All right, so. This is going to go from here. So I'm going to run this cord through here again the same way I did before. And I'm just gonna loosely tie this around. Right, it's not permanent at this point. Because I wanna make sure, nice. So, we're still here, even on this little one, it's still hitting perfect. Okay.
They already sound pretty. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and double knot this right here. Now all I have to do is tie these and make sure that they're just about the same length, right? And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can eyeball this. So this is going to give me enough wire to go all the way up here, right? See how long that is? I've got plenty of room. And we're going to do the same thing four more times. So I have a um, army wind chime that has a little army man on it and it has uh, little army guys hanging between uh, the actual chimes as well. And I've had him out there for years. I think I want him at a charity event at American Legion, or maybe the VFW, I don't know. Um, and a friend of mine had bought me, uh, when she retired, a wind chime that has little flowers and butterflies and stuff on it. It's horribly cute. Um, but our house is red, white, and blue. It's literally red, white, and blue. It is uh, blue paint on the siding. And, oh, Khaleesi's lurking. Oh, good. Yeah, I gotta go to your doctor's appointment. That's important. Um, so it's got blue, paint, bl blue painted siding, it's got red brick, and it's got white shutters, white trim. So, red, white, and blue house. And my little um, doormat says, you are the stars to my stripes. And <laughs> my wellhead is a little painted military police officer. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little patriotic. So although I love the sentiment and I love the little flowery butterfly wind chime guy, um, this one will suit my home much better. I think. So how are we doing? These look fairly straight. This one's a little low. It's not tied yet. It's not bad. Not bad. 
so this is the part where it's going to get noisy. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that all of these, these strings are to the interior of these beads. All right. Those beads are there to help protect them on the outside and to stop them from moving back and forth. So I want these strings to come from the inside out, right? All right, there we go. Very nice. You like it so far? It's hard to tell what it's going to be, I'm sure. I mean, you can tell it's wind chimes, but hard to really be able to visualize how this is going to go together. So, I have two choices. I can pull this up here and all six strings I can tie into anywhere on this wire, right? This has five holding points. The bottom one has six holding points. So they're not exactly the same. I can't just thread them through these holding points that I made with these beads. Or I can take this and tie strings up to the top and then take these strings independently and tie them to the top. So here's the difference. If these are both independent, you're gonna get more movement, right? If these are tied together with only that inch or two between them, then when they move, they're gonna swing like this. So it all depends on what kind of movement do you want? Do you want this kind of movement? I'll wait for them to stop chiming. Or do you want this kind of movement? Do you hear the difference? So depending on how you build your wind chimes, they're going to chime differently. So we have a third element that's gonna go in here, which is this internal bell right? And we'll be putting it on last. So I personally like for them to chime independently, which means I'm going to take this. I'm going to cut five more cords and we're going to end up with 11 cords going from the circles to the top. And I'm going to give myself a good foot of cord here. I need more hands, right? Where's my, my in-house mods at? My in-person moderators, that's what I need. I need a babysitter. All right. So here's five of these. carefully set that over. And then this bad boy goes in the center, right? I'm so worried about this being loud in this microphone.
There we go. So I don't think I want it any longer than that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dictate how far this is going to be. Right? So I'm just going to tie my simple little knot here. I do need it to loop around here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave those tails just like I did before. Right? We'll cut those off when we're sure that none of our lengths need adjusting. We'll get this knot tied loosely at first, pull that taut, and then double my knot. Nope. Still too loose. Still too loose. That's better. And we'll tighten that up. And then we'll come over here and do it again. I didn't have to draw out a process map for this. Because this is a lot of steps.
pretty good. That looks pretty good. One more. And then we'll start attaching those bad boys right there for the brass. This one seems a little loose to me. Or this one seems a little tight to me. Overall, it doesn't look bad. I mean, other than our 8 million extra strings. <laughs> but we're going to get those all trimmed up here in a minute. So, these single ones, I'm going to bring up here. I'm going to take the two ties. I put it inside of this. I'm going to take the two ties from one of those bottom ropes. And I'm going to tie this around. And knot them together. Okay. 
Now, I only have five of those, and I have six of these. So these first two I'm going to tie on one string. And then the rest of them will be tied out accordingly. Making sure I'm not missing y'all talking to me. I feel like I've been awful quiet tonight. You're tired and struggling. Do you need to go take a nap? Go take a nap. Go rest. It's okay to rest. I can't decide if this distance is good or not. You know what? I'm going to go with it, and if it's bad, we're going to just tighten it up. You'd have a mess of knots already. Well, I kind of do. I got a mess of tails. See, the problem is until I bring up, you know, all four sides, it becomes very hard to see who the who the loose one is. I think it's that one right there. But it's all right. Here's the thing. I kind of don't mind the tails, and I'm halfway tempted to leave them. <laughs> I kind of like how they look. 
Isn't that funny? They're like fringy and messy and I kind of dig it. Oh, this is caught on the, like, why isn't this moving? It's caught on that little lip of the key ring. This does not want to not. <laughs> okay. Lord. So you need to come up about to here. I bet that's loud. Was it super loud? No. Okay. Bet that was. I'm not actually trying to do that, but. trying to get this right because these guys do not want to cooperate at all. Did I just get one really short? Is that what I did? That knot's never coming undone. Like ever. There we go. It's still a little crooked. But it's not bad. It's not bad. Whew. 
tell you what, by the time we get this project done, I'm never going to want to hear these things chime again. <laughs> That's enough out of you. Can't sell them. They have to stay here. Because these are our rounds. Well, our brass. So it's going to hang up in my, my front patio. That's what's going to happen. No negotiating about that. I made boutonnieres for a wedding out of the same 556 five, brass. And it was brass that the bride had shot herself. So the groom, the groomsmen, and the fathers of the bride and groom all wore boutonnieres that they thought were cool and trendy. <laughs> and then uh, after the wedding, she told them all that That was her brass. <laughs> and I thought it was fabulous. I was like, oh, okay. So you just waited till after the wedding to explain to them that they're all wearing bullets on their lapels? Like, that's not threatening. Not intimidating at all. <laughs> By the way, now that it's official, just wanted you to know. <laughs> it sounds so pretty though. I really like it. It's a little crooked. This side is crooked, right there. See that? That one string is my problem, right there. That one right there. So, I'll trim up all the tails on this, and I can't, I can't use a lighter. What I do with this wax thread is I'll trim up the tails, and I'll, I'll pat it together with my hands, and then I'll take a lighter and melt that wax. But there's enough wax on this thread that when I do it, it drips. So I don't want to do it in here. But I'll just trim these guys up, melt that wax so that this is all one nice solid piece. I'll do the same thing here, and then this will be all clean and tidy, and we'll hang it up, and it's done. And it will chime in the wind just like that. Pretty cool, right? I like how the brass sounds. Actually, I'm gonna set this over here so that I remember to do that. And I don't want it to get hurt in the meantime. Wow, you know what? It's 5.56. You're still waiting? For your doctor's appointment, you're still waiting? Oh, you, you have a phone, a phone appointment or a Skype appointment or something like that? Whatever it is, remote, whatever. Nice. So 
we could end our stream right here. Uh, but as long as nobody minds and you all would like to, I would like to work on uh, some of these acrylic paintings that we uh, started yesterday. So is everybody okay if we do that? Wow, Khaleesi, that's pretty late. That's pretty late. 30 minutes is a long time. All right. I'm just going to get this stuff tidied up here real quick before I start painting because I don't want uh, to get paint on these beads or wire or anything else. So let me get this picked up real quick. And uh, we'll get ready to touch up this stuff that I was working on yesterday. So yesterday we did a chain pull where I took a chain, um, did a pour on some canvases, meaning I poured paint onto the canvas. And uh, then we dipped a chain in paint and made this design by pulling the chain through the paint, which is pretty cool, right? And I really enjoyed the technique. The issue that I had is that the formula that I use for acrylic pour painting includes um, silicone. Never having done this technique before, I did not know that the background should not have any silicone in it. Um, I think I'm going to use this little guy right here. So what we have are these patches of canvas that you can see, right? You had to check in 15, wow, wow. Um, and I want this paint to actually fully cover, right? So I'm not gonna do a pour on it, meaning I'm not gonna pour paint on top of it. Um, but I am gonna add a little bit of water to my paint here. just to loosen it up. Yeah, 45 minutes, that stinks. I gotta put my glasses back on, guys. So I'm not really looking to correct anything from the pull itself, right? From, from this, this. I like that to stay just the way it is. But I l would like to correct these parts where this black paint came off the canvas because of the amount of silicone in it. So we're just going to brush over that. This is going to take some careful moving to not come over.
the rest of that. So real quickly, I just want to show you the difference, right? So see that? Even wet, you can tell that there's coverage. See where that canvas pokes through there? Now had I not add, added silicone to my paint medium and paint, that would not have happened and it would have looked uniform like this. So that's what I'm correcting on this painting. I do like this painting. I think it's very dynamic. I love the red, black, and white. I like the um, separation halfway through the canvas. I like that a lot too. Just not real happy about this black coverage, so I wanted to correct that. So, I don't want to cover the red. <laughs> this stuff is so difficult to correct after the fact without damaging what organically happened in the painting. Because I don't want to repaint it. I don't want to change it. I'm just not okay with that canvas on through. So now, like I said, this was a brand new technique that I've never done before. And there's really only two choices as an artist when something like this happens. When you realize, okay, so this recipe isn't going to work with this process, right? Not a technique that's going to work like this. I need to change that recipe. You can either destroy that canvas right? Just decide that that was a that was a learning moment. Or you can go through and work on it a little bit more, right? Ask yourself what what needs to be changed. What pieces do you like, right? I always start there. What do I like? What's good? So I start with what's good. I decide what to keep. And then I try and determine, okay, so now that I know what I like about it, does something need to be changed? And if it does, how do I fix it? So instead of tackling the whole problem, right? Like, I don't like this whole painting because of X. And just throwing the whole thing out and giving up. I learn a lot more by doing something like this, where I go in, do the detail work, keep what's good, and then look at it again. Now. Is this good, right? Am I pleased with this as an artist? Is this enough? Doing that kind of stuff and learning, one, when to stop, and two, 
allowing mind itself to process from from the good out is a huge mind changer for me. It helps me change how my brain works. It helps me change how I think. It helps me continually keep what's good and be able to discern what I can do about what's not. But then I only have to tackle one thing, right? I only have to deal with one thing. One issue at a time. For instance, I don't like the splatter marks. They're gone. In my mind already, this painting is a hundred times better. Um, these little drips on the side here, I don't like that. So now when you look at this side, in my mind, huge improvement from this, right? But all the good things about this remain, right? So that, let's see what happens with this very first time I ever do a chain pull. What happens um, if we put a lot of paint on the chain? What happens if we don't wipe the chain off between poles? Right? That's what we learned in this painting right here. So the first pull I did had quite a bit of paint on it. I let it drip for a little bit and then we just went for it. That is the middle red flower looking thing in the center. Right? My second pull, I barely ran paper towel over the top of that chain and dunked it right back in the red and you can see some of the black. The third one, I didn't wipe it at all. I just went ahead and dipped it in the red, and that's why there's so much black here and why it pulled so much white. So the three of these are actually three separate techniques that we used within the same painting. That's pretty cool. So, now that I've touched this up, there's one more spot. This bit right here, this little tiny black bit right here, that I had thought to change. And the more I look at it, the more I don't think I will. So, the sides look nice and clean now. This is very clean now. This is a very, very striking painting. And what's funny is that those details up close, which are really cool. Like, I love the dark to light that happened in those and the depth. Like, they really almost look 3D. It's a pretty cool effect. But what I really like about it is that if you look at it from here, so like if this is on a wall, that's really cool looking. I love the black, white, and red. So I really think that's all this painting needed. Now I can pick it apart. I could black out all of this. I could white out all of that. I could get rid of this tiny tail here, this little bit here. But I think I really take away from the spirit of the actual painting if I do that. Just bland it down. So that's going to sit over here. And wait for a clear coat. Then we have this one. Again, black background. 
Uh, we made our own blue and added some metallics to it, so we've got some pretty cool wispy effects with that. But again, I had used Floetrol, so I do have spots in this background that aren't perfect. I do want the edges painted the same as the other one so that it looks nice and finished and clean. And most of these problems with this one on the background are all towards the edge anyway. I do like to paint the edge of my canvases though. Not everyone hangs up canvases in frames. Some people just hang them on the wall as they are. So, I prefer my edges painted. And I clear coat them. just to make sure that they're protected. And again, just that little detail I think makes a world of difference. It looks much better to me already. <laughs> and normally after I paint a canvas, if I have little tiny details like this, um, I'll touch them up, or if they get, you know, a second or third coat of clear, clear coat, just because that particular canvas needed it. Um, I don't normally do those on stream. But I thought tonight it would be nice to get to spend a little bit more time with you guys. And sometimes it's cool to get to see the entire process, right? All those little details. Let's see how that looks. Much better. You know, honestly, the more I look at this, the more I think it needs like little baby seahorses. <laughs> like a little baby seahorse wrapped around hanging on to that. Like 
deep under the sea iridescent coral or plants or something. That would look cool. All right. So, the other thing we made was we did a pour over Christmas ornaments, which turned out super cool. Make it focus. Focus on me. Literally focusing on everything else. Turned out so cool. I love these. But the tops of them, where I had them perched to dry, are not covered. Hang on just a second, guys. Sorry. All right. So each of these Is going to get a little round like this. And then that will finish them off. But they may have to sit and dry for a little bit longer. All right. So, got a little bit done. Got a little bit done. So with that, guys, uh, we are going to call it a night. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, tomorrow, Rick is going to be doing... Um, simplicity and looking at, at how uh, some of his favorite songs and how simplicity made, made them great and I've heard him speak to this before it's really really cool to listen to him so if you do get a chance check him out at 1 p.m. Central tomorrow right here on Creative at stream uh, I will be back next Thursday um, I do believe we're probably gonna do some painting to, on next next week um, but we'll get it put on the schedule for you so you'll know. And you can always go to creativeets.org slash live to see that schedule, see what's coming up next. Uh, and it's constantly being updated. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. And um, hopefully I'll see you uh, next week or uh, around Mixer. You can always pop by and say hi to me. Uh, you can look up Mrs. OEF5 and uh, check out what I do on my other channel as well. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great night. We are a nonprofit that's helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Old Opry, to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. 
that these programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.